I'm Captain April, Mr. Spock. I believe in you, Will. Be patient. Give this a real chance, and I promise that you'll have every opportunity to create the future you want. Recently, there has been a kerfluffle about Paramount's most recent casting announcement. Namely, they have finally decided to have Robert April join Continuity. Well, Continuity outside of the animated series. The problem is, they are taking an animated character that looked and acted like, well, this. We're all right. We're home. The reverse aging process has stopped. And using an actor that, well, looks like this. Wait, who are you? Bill Banks, Will's uncle. Who the hell are you? The problem with this choice, at least its overall debate in the fandom, is that it honestly only invites people who aren't really going to think through what's occurred and decide what's actually best. It's going to just invite bad arguments. Among the opinions that I've seen so far, the most prevalent were, this is racism, trying to destroy what Trek was by rewriting a character's race unnecessarily. Yas, queen, give us a strong black character. And finally doing what has been done to others so much, let's make the white man pay. However, like almost everything in the world, it's actually a pretty nuanced affair. First, while there isn't a justification for any of this, I think we all have to admit how ironic it is that there is a controversy involving a white person being cast as a black person. Even if you think what's happening right now is wrong, you have to admit historically persons of color were recast to be white. That was a long-standing criticism that was even common as recent as the 90s. So it being turned around will make others scoff when you say that you don't agree with it. And this discussion will be a lot better if we all just admit that it did happen. A lot. In the end, there are really only two questions in my opinion though. First, is this something that is a detrimental change to Star Trek? And what is the exact reason for them doing it? I honestly don't think that this change is detrimental or will hurt Star Trek at all. Let's be honest here. Robert April had a very small role in Trek. He was a poor player that strut and fret his hour upon the stage and then was heard no more until now. This is someone that very few people cared about and most had no idea they existed. So changing him isn't really, it's not really a huge deal. April had little impact. And not for nothing, but you know my channel, if I really wanted to, if I really, really wanted to, I'd bet dollars to donuts how I could justify Captain April changing. We do know that in Trek you can look like, well, anything. You can change your gender, your race, hell, your entire identity, so it wouldn't be a huge deal. And if I look through the canon, I bet I could find something to tie it all together. This isn't Cisco. this isn't Picard, this isn't even Michael. This was a character that kept popping up, maybe in text, and was seen once or twice that was more an Easter egg than anything else. And to be honest, it's funny to me because what most people say that are critics of Discovery Era Trek is that they really just want people who can act. They don't want any bias. They want to see Trek be written as Trek. So the question becomes, is Adrian Holmes a better choice? While he's a strong character, he can definitely hold his own on stage, I think we should give him a chance, because it might make Trek better. And not for nothing, but race-bent and gender-bent characters have been excellently done in the past. They have changed the original fundamentally, but also made a better story. Look no further than Nick Fury or Starbuck. Adrian Holmes appears to be a fine actor, and I think we should give him a chance. But that's just me. The last thing to discuss is whether this was done as some kind of woke decision. I won't argue that I don't think Paramount executives salivated at the thought of adding yet another person of color to the cast. They want to make money, and that's a good way to do it. But on the ground, the ones that hired Adrian, the writers, other actors, those who are working in the crew, I personally think they just want what's best for the production. I don't think they hired Adrian because he was a person of color and it ticked a box. I think they hired Adrian because he was a hell of an actor. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded. Hey guys, if you've stayed past the end, then you're probably one of those fans who watches my stuff all the way through and you're dedicated. First, I want to thank you. Now, I may do an actual video on the topic, but more likely it'll be a live stream if I do anything at all. I wanted to take a minute to say...
Well, thank you to you guys. It has been my honor to create videos for you as a career. However, I am taking a hiatus from doing YouTube full time. I'm going back to making it a hobby. I honestly didn't like what I was becoming when I did this all the way through, and I found something else that I enjoy doing that will pay the bills. That means you'll see less videos on this channel. It's been like two weeks since I uploaded the last one, but the ones I do upload will be very inspired. It also mean less Star Trek, but it'll mean I'm more creative, which means the Star Trek you do see will be a hell of a lot better than what I've been putting out. If you're a patron, I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a post there sometime shortly. In the end, I hope you guys like Babylon 5, Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek, and Star Wars, because I'm going to be doing a lot more of those now that I really don't have to rely on this for income. Thanks again.